Hey, how's it going everyone? Today's video is going to be focused on how to use an edge finder, this little guy right here, and we're going to be practicing on the small uh, offcut of aluminum. So before we put our edge finder in the machine and get started, we have to get our machine set to the correct RPM. For this case, we're going to be making sure the machine is under 1000, preferably right around 600 RPM. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure I'm in high range by looking at the speed range selector. Once I know that, I can turn the switch on and change the RPM. Now that we have it set to 600 RPM, I can go over to the right hand side of the machine and select the correct size column. In this case, it's a 3 8 inch shank, so I'm going to use a 3 8 inch collet. Once I got the collet selected, I can insert our tool into the collet, insert the collet into the spindle, and rotate until I find the keyway. Once I find the keyway, I'm going to push the tool and the collet up with my right hand, and then with my left hand, I'm going to press this green button and lift it to in. It will pull the tool up into the machine and secure it in place. Once we got our tool in the machine, we're all ready to get started edge finding. So before we go ahead and edge find, we want to make sure we're edge finding on good spots of our part. We can see over here on the right side, this is a saw cut face. It's very rough. Uh, and they might be at a slight angle or taper to it, so we wouldn't really get an accurate reading. Over here we have a newly machined face that we just faced and flipped over. Uh, so this uh, edge would be a pretty good uh, edge to locate off of. And then these guys up here on the front and back, this is just an extruded aluminum bar. So there can be a lot of variance in there, so it probably wouldn't be a good idea to locate off these edges here. So for this setup, we're going to go ahead and locate off our newly machined face. We've already went ahead and deburred this top edge. You want to make sure you're not uh, locating on an edge that has a burr. It could throw off the indicator. Also, because we don't want to use these uh, extruded side walls of our part, we're going to actually be using the vice jaws. Now, whenever you do this, keep in mind uh, your vice jaws might be a little worn out. So make sure you're selecting areas that aren't damaged or dinged up. So for example, there's lots of scratches. You can hear it with the scribe here as I move over. There's some ridges and burrs. Uh, so in this case, we're going to be locating kind of in this clean spot right over here and this front edge right over here. Uh, and that way, that'll give us a pretty accurate reading in the Y direction. So now that our uh, machine is set to the correct RPM and our edge finder is in the machine, we can start edge finding. To do that, we're going to start by locating the X uh, axis on our newly machined face. I'm just going to move it over. I would recommend doing this with the machine turned on, but for video purposes we have it turned off for now. Uh, I'm going to roughly locate in the center of the part in the Y direction. And because we're edge finding and there's such little tool pressure on the machine, we can go ahead and lower the quill. To do that we're going to lift the brake right here, and then I'm going to lower this guy so the proper face of our end mill, or sorry, of our edge finder is on our part. I'm going to go ahead and turn on the machine and we're going to pick up this leftmost edge. As we can see, edge finder kicked off. That means we just hit that edge of our part and we're ready to start working on the DRL. First thing I'm going to do is go ahead and do X, zero, enter. And we're going to start by lifting up our edge finder above the part. So I'll lift up the brake. Using the quill, I'll raise it above and then I'll lock it back down. Now if we think about it, the rightmost edge of our edge finder is just on that edge of our part. Now that's not very convenient. We, won't, we don't want to have a 0.1 inch offset every time we want to use our value. So we want the center of our spindle to be right on that edge. To do this, we're going to simply move our machine uh, 0.1 inches in the offset. So we need to move to the left. I'm pointing my thumb to the left. My fingers will curl in the direction to turn the dial. And I'm looking up at the DRO until I see 0.1 inches. Now that I got 0.1 inches, I'm going to go ahead and do X, 0, enter, and we've just zeroed our X axis. Now we can start by selecting 
uh, by edge finding on our y direction. And in this case, we're going to find the center of our part. And to do that, we're going to use this handy one half feature of our DRO. We're going to start by just edge finding on the back side of our vise. After that, we're going to move over to the front side of our vise and locate that. In this particular case, because we're using the one half feature, we don't have to take into account the offset of our tool. So I'll start by just moving slightly to the left of our part. We'll go ahead and lower our quill by lifting the brake and lowering it down. You also want to make sure that you're not on a, a piece of your vice jaw that might be chewed up or damaged. So I'm picking a, a fairly clean side of my vice jaw. So just like before, we're going to go ahead and turn on the machine and we're going to make sure that our edge finder is wiggling. And I'm not going to use my fingers to do that, I'm going to use my favorite precision paintbrush. I'm just going to give it a little flip. We can see that our tool is now just kicked off, so I'm going to come up here to my DRO and do Y, 0, enter. Now, uh, in this case, we don't have to lift it up like in the X. I'm just going to move over to the front and we'll repeat the same process. So our edge finder now has kicked off on the front jaw. Now instead of doing Y0 enter, I'm going to use the one half feature and then select the axis I want to split in half. We'll do one half and then Y. What that did is it split the distance traveled by like basically by two. And that means that when we go to zero on our DRO, we will be right on dead center of our part. This is a really handy feature to pick up the zero points of, sorry, the center lines of any part like a cylinder or a square or anything like that. And there we go, we can visually check by stepping onto the side and seeing we are center line. So uh, now that we've located our part in both X and Y with our edge finder, I hope you've learned that it can be a little bit finicky and it can be difficult to tell when exactly the part kicks off. To help with this, we can set up a vice stop to allow you to really only locate once or twice uh, instead of having to locate a part every time you put it on the machine. If you head over to the toolbox, you can find one of these guys. This is one of our vice stops. What it does is it clamps onto the back side of our vice and it lets you have a repeatable setup that you can take the part out, put it back in, and know that you're reasonably accurate, probably within about five thou. To use it, butt this up against your part and then use an Allen wrench to just clamp it down to the vice jaws. Now, if I were to take off our part, put it back in, I just need to butt it up against our vice jaw, and we'll be good to go. You can use this, for example, on the side plates, when you're machining the two holes on the top, or the central hole on the side of the plates. Well, uh, that's about it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed learning more about edge finders and vice stops. We hope you enjoyed your journey here in the machine shop, and you have a good day.